Okay, it's starting now. Hi. From the maker's corner again. Yeah, just wanted to show you something interesting. Um, let's see now, I'll show you this one here. Now this is the standard setup for the thermistor. So you have a thermistor there, and then you have a 100 kilo ohm resistor, and then you take the um, divided voltage into the analog input, and you basically are measuring the voltage difference between, or the voltage divide between these two different resistors, because this thermistor varies its um, resistance based on the temperature. And um, I was playing with this kind of set it up. So I will show this now. There. Hope you can see this. Um, so what I did is I just put it on a breadboard just to be able to test it. Plugged in the leads, you know, as in the circuit diagram. And then I was then I got this. Uh, wait a second, I'll show you. Correct display here, and as you see, the temperature is indicated here, and it's pretty much jumping all over the place. It's not stable at all. And then um, I decided to investigate this. So if we go back to this one. So what else I did is I set up my oscilloscope and measured the um, voltage going into the analog converter. And I will try and show it now if I can just reposition the camera here without it falling down. There. So as we see this is the um, voltage at the voltage divide and you can see that it has quite a lot of interference um, and then also if we um, check the um, FFT result then we can see that one has quite a lot of interference down closer to the zero hertz and well basically it's low low frequency interference Sorry about the camera, it's not very stable. So we see we got a lot of interference, mainly at the low end. So anyway, I was wondering, like, where did this come from? So, um... I can just try and put this back again. Oops. Not that stable. camera so this is not really working okay well that's pretty much it and um, so I was wondering where this interference was coming from and no oh the auto switch off of this camera I <laughs> really need to turn that off <laughs> keep on forgetting that I need to do that it's easy to do, it's just like I never remembered to do it. It's like other settings, always. Okay, but anyway, back to... Um, so actually I have this thermistor, it's uh, rolled up like this, the wire for it. And then the thermistor's at the end like that. So of course, uh, well... The natural conclusion is that this is an antenna. So it's picking up interference. So the issue was the where could it be picking up that kind of low, low frequency into mostly low frequency interference. So anyway, I thought it was the um, actually tested this. So turn that off, and then we go back to here, and then we see the temperature result is stable. So anyway, this was a little bit of an education um, related to interference and how it can affect measurement results. 
I mean, th this here is a pure analog signal that goes through this. I mean, it's basically it's the voltage that it's that it's measuring. Um, it's different with these. Uh, let's see if I can show this single wire um, or one wire. The the signal is the temperature is processed into a digital signal. So it's a protocol that sends over the actual temperature value to the computer. And basically, to disturb this with a external interference, you would need to destroy the digital data, and including the checksum. I think this protocol might have a checksum. I can't promise that that's the case. But so it actually would requ it requires a much higher level of interference than uh, what the thermal car or the uh, thermistor will. But I think that this will probably do for what we're doing. I mean, th this is the same thermistor technology that's used in the um, in my 3D printer, and I have wait, is there like two thermistors in the system? Um, and I've never really noticed that there's any problems. But however, I have seen people. If we go back to the circuitry here, uh, where's that? This one here. I have seen several web web pages where um, they've added a condenser of some kind uh, to this um, uh, yeah to the um, voltage divide um, and, and that's probably to try and prevent the that interfere yeah to cut off the interference to filter it out and I'm actually going to do that I think in the final circuit even if I get very stable Basically, I'm getting stable enough temperatures without the lamp interfering. Let's see here. So I mean, it's it's pretty much rock stable. But I think I'll just to to avoid um, the possibility of that interference type. Then I will um, I'll add, I'll I'll try and find that web page again and pick their suggested capacitor and um, use that in the circuit. Well, anyway, this was a good experiment. Just thought I'd like the community to know about it. Because this, every time I find on the internet, I find these examples of using the thermistor in Arduino, or basically in any context. It's it's always basically the simple circuit. So uh, it, it's a minority of the web pages where you find um, an instruction to add add a capacitor of some kind. But I think actually having a capacitor will actually uh, at least mitigate some of the problems that might come from frequency interference from external sources. Or one should just move to all one wire thermistors. But the problem that, that one has, of course, well, okay. switch back to this one here, is that this thermal block has a nice place for a thermistor. So you can you screw it in here and disconnect it there. So you know the if you look at the one wire or even the um, encapsulated chip, I mean it's yeah it's a bit uh, difficult to get in there. I mean if one didn't put it in the end somehow. But, ah, I think I would want to use it just to use the. Thermistor for this one. As I said, I'm gonna find that website with this and, and um, borrow the suggested um, capacitor size and um, call it a day. But anyway, this was cool to um, also uh, show off the um, why it's useful to have an oscilloscope. And these aren't that expensive, but you can find it in my list of upgrades. I, I bought this from China. I can't promise it's the world's best oscilloscope, but at least in the basic stuff that I do, I don't do any lab work or anything. So for me, it's so. I mean, you you can get the um, as you see the si the main signals calm down now. Yeah, I think I showed that before. But when you turn the lamp off, then then the interference disappears, and you put it on, then you get a lot of interference. <laughs> yeah, and um. But I mean, uh, let's see if I could. Oh, wait. Just wanted to get red. Oh, 
Yeah, oh, there you go. So, I mean, in, in, in its basic function, you can just, you know, measure the voltage on any line you have. And um, this oscilloscope has a fant I, th I think the one should... Now, nowadays, when all oscilloscopes are digital, then basically one should see the one gets the FFT function out, even if it's total crap implementation. I mean, what this oscilloscope promises it can do, I... Nah, I don't really believe that it can. But for real basic stuff, like, okay, you know, does a signal contain frequency-dependent interference, and what is the, like, amplitude of, the, of that, you know, interference? It gives you some basic idea that, you know, like if I turn this off now, the one, you see, the interference is basically, the frequency-dependent interference, basically, it's gone. You get white noise. And when I put the lamp on, ah, oh, then you see it. Very, at least in one frequency area, you see a very distinct. Because here's the frequency scale. So this is really useful. I mean, if I wanted to dimension a capacitor, then I could just take this frequency and calculate a filter for it. But I mean, I'm too lazy, so I'm just going to go onto the internet, find that article, and um, you know, use the capacitor they use. And it'll probably be good enough. Because any capacitor you add is going to be. I mean, if you don't, if you're not dealing with time constants, if you don't want quick temperature me change measurement then uh, basically any any capacitor will do yeah. so anyway that um, nice to have equipment that pays for itself even though I don't get paid for doing any of this stuff <laughs> at least I feel I haven't wasted money on equipment I don't use yeah so is there anything else no no I will just integrate that integrate the um, thermistor circuit onto the proto board and um, probably post an update <laughs> on that later then. But this was, this was interesting because you know without an oscilloscope it's like really it, it, it's hard. I mean if you only have a multimeter then okay you can guess. I mean uh, obviously you, you know if you have any kind of electronics um, experience then you'll probably start guessing oh it's interference and what do you do when you have interference you try and add a filter and see if it happens so basically you know ad hoc people just like oh I'll chuck in a capacitor you know see what happens um, like a low filter you know, RC you could even use a capacitor coil problem is the coils uh, you can't get them really like, you know, electronic stores don't sell you know coils like it's it's not easy to um, source them locally so if you need to have an R and a, a good R an RC circuit then you basically need to cannibalize the coils from some existing electronics like speaker systems or something so you can make a low low um, frequency filter so basically you're stuck with um, using capacitor um, based solutions not that um, usually works. Anything else to say? I think I'll actually load the oscilloscope software on the computer because I'm sure it came with software. It's just that um, in my use I usually like just run the oscilloscope directly. You can actually it does have um, oscilloscope control software that, that you can load on the computer and you can actually do every pretty much everything from the computer using the software. Because that might be easier than I'd have to do this sort of awkward moving around the camera to get the oscilloscope in the picture. Or I don't know, maybe it's preferred because then, um, you know, when you're using the oscilloscope you physically, then you can also see what I do, you know, what functions I use and stuff. Even if different oscilloscopes use a different UI. But don't, I don't think it's worth buying an oscilloscope without FFT math. Because, the, I mean, it, it's peanuts. It, it's it doesn't cost much to add that to an oscilloscope, even. So so just uh, I don't think the one needs to pay that much more to get it. I mean, how g you you probably if you pay more you get a better FFT analysis. That of course is obvious. You know, if you really want to deal with a large frequency range and you know the data points need to be more accurate than you know. But I mean, for the hobbyist use, 
like quick super analysis like oh the signal looks like it's noisy you know this voltage voltage um, noise I don't want to have okay then give me an idea what the frequency is because then if you get the frequency then it gives you ideas like where could it be coming from what's causing it and if you can't find the source then it gives you better opportunities to know okay I, I will I want to like filter the for, you know filter the signal down to a certain frequency range with either passive or I mean there's even active filtering stuff you can buy um, this is the thing everything's modular now this you know actually if you don't want to build complicated filtering systems then you can actually buy circuits that do it for it they take the analog signal convert it to digital apply all kinds of filterings to it and then chuck out the output so yeah we might actually try some of that I don't know ideas for future videos so, um, yeah, because I mean, the oscilloscope does the digital signal processing, it doesn't do it analog. It converts the analog signal basically that comes in here, it, it, it gets converted to digital directly, and then internally, it just everything's just processor calculations. Oh, okay, so I think that's about it for, the, for now. I think that was a good update because this is what one deals with when one. Yeah, and also shows the the um, the difference between um, you know analog sens sensors and digital. I mean, uh, here, as I said, this 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 goes to digital data goes out of here. So it, it tells you the number, it tells you the value of the temperature directly from this interface going into the computer. So there, you know, if if, if there is interference, it would need to destroy the whole signal the whole digital protocol signal and, and that's actually harder to do than screwing up an analog signal I mean, an analog signal can be much easily affected I mean that's why most most um, you know sensors have moved to being digital at the point because yeah and you can you can put in error error checking you know, and correction directly there you can put protocol checking you can put diagnostics on the sensor it can be a smart sensor, and you know. So, uh, but anyway, you can't beat the cost of a you know, thermistor. It's like nothing. It doesn't cost anything. Th th these are quite expensive packages, though, especially if you so if I source them locally, they're idiotically expensive. But uh, as a hobby hobby user, not making anything for commercial applications, and whatever, I could buy as many as I want. Okay, so that wraps it up for today. Ah, not for the day maybe. Maybe I'll make an update video. It depends. I'm going to have to go do stuff for the house and stuff. So. Yeah, see you guys later.